month-long sweet free challenge I believe it can you believe I believe it I believe welcome back to living la vida low carb on YouTube episode 57 my name is Jimmy Moore I'm Christine Moore and we are here with an update yes if you saw episode 56 were you laughing at you me ha 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 if you saw episode 56, then you saw where I introduced a challenge. Yes, all you YouTubers out there, you like challenges, right? Well, this was quite a challenge, and it's gotten quite a bit of response, too. Thank you for all the comments that you've left. But I, I issued a challenge that said, look, give up the taste of sweet for one month. Dun, dun, dun. Sounds pretty easy, right? Now... When I say sweet, I'm not just talking about sugar. I'm not just talking about high fructose corn syrup and all the other things that you think of as sweet. I'm also including artificial sweeteners, which include Splenda and NutraSweet and uh, saccharin and stevia, even like chewing gum, even the natural sugars that come in fruits that you can eat on even on a low-carb diet, not during this challenge. So, so many of them have joined me on this challenge, and I wanted to give you a 10-day update, because it's now day 10 of my... Actually, this is my second sweet free challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't I try one last month? Went 18 days, lost 10 pounds during those 18 days, and now I wanted to be back on it again this month just to see what would happen. Yep. So, what has happened? You're losing more weight. I'm losing more weight? How's that working? I don't know either, but hey, it works. It, we, we have a theory, but... Yeah, tell, tell them the theory. Uh, we think that the um, just the taste of sweet triggers your brain to tell your pancreas to release insulin. So... It's possible. That's... That's the theory, and we're sticking to it. And obviously, if you're gaining weight, you're producing insulin. So the only way to prevent weight gain is to reduce the insulin. Now, for those of you who don't know what insulin is, it's a hormone in your body that uh, basically controls your blood sugar and can lead to a lot of issues, obesity being one of them, and lots of diseases. So you want to try to keep the insulin in your body low, and if you do that, you lose weight. You lose weight. Or once you get to goal, you maintain your weight. So yeah, apparently taking the sweet off the tongue is helping with that. Now, something else I've also done for me personally, in addition to cutting out the sweet taste, is I've cut out all low-carb products. So, a lot of the products that I was eating were sweet anyway, so those, those were out, like my Chocolate Perfection bars and my candy bar and, uh, uh, you know, Russell Stover and all those little sweet type things that I enjoyed eating. But I've also cut out, like, the low-carb wraps. Those are gone. And I've even tried to cut out like processed cheeses and other processed foods and replace them with like real whole foods. Um, like I use goat cheese with my um, eggs now. Love it. Yep. It, it's perfectly fine. So it's a challenge, but it is so That's worth why you it. Call it, a challenge. it is called a, a sweet free challenge. Thank you, uh, <laughs> sweetie. She's the stater of the obvious. <laughs> So after 10 days, I have lost a total of 8 pounds. 
Now that's on top of the 10 pounds I lost last month. So in just the last two months with a few days in between of not doing Sweet Free, I've lost 18 of the 35 pounds that I had put on this year. So what are you down to? So I'm down now to 246. I'm trying to get down. A lot of people say, well, what's your goal? Like, well, my goal is whenever it stops. You know, I'd like to get back down to 230 um, so I can be back where I was in 2004 after I lost the 180. Um, and that will be the 230 mark. But if I go beyond 230, eating this sweet free, which by the way, I'm going to go longer, longer than one month. Isn't that amazing? After yep. 10 days, I now, I, I can go without a Diet Coke. I can go without uh, having a, a, you know, chocolate. For it's now. amazing. I, it's truly amazing. I, I never would have thought that the way I'm eating now, and by the way, you can see all of my menus. If, you want, if you're curious about what I eat, go to lowcarbmenu.blogspot.com, and you'll see every menu that I've had. If you look up December the 1st through the 31st, and of course we're doing this long before the 31st, but th that will be the 31 uh, days that I was on this challenge. This is a month-long challenge that I did during December 2008, but I wanted to put it out there for anybody to start at any time because going sweet-free, it, it'll change your perspective. Now, if you're just starting out on low carb, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going sweet free right away. You don't want to do away with everything. You that will yeah, you first want to acclimate yourself to the low carb lifestyle because, you know, granted, it's a little different than probably the way you were eating before that got you uh, obese to begin with, like I was at 410 pounds. And there's no way I would have ever, ever in 2004, been able to go sweet free Atkins low carb diet and been successful. No, I was a mess that. as it is. I'll say that right now. I was what? You were a mess I was as a it me is. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so I would recommend if you're just starting out on Atkins or your low carb diet, why don't you just start with that plan? Because there are plenty of options where you can have some sugar free alternatives. Yes, artificial sweeteners. I don't see anything wrong with them when you first start to acclimate yourself away from the sugar and to something healthier, at least with less calories as well. Do that. Then, at some point, when you've been on the, the diet for a few years, which is a lot of you, a lot of you have been on it like me, um, I'm approaching five years being on this diet, and you know, maybe, just maybe, after you've been on it a while, your body acclimates to those artificial sweeteners and treats them like they would sugar. I, I don't understand why it would do that, but there's you know certainly evidence out there, at least theoretically and an anecdotally, that it's true. So if you've been on Atkins for a few years or a low carb diet for a few years and you're seeing your weight stall or you're seeing some really fishy things starting to happen with your body, why don't you try going sweet free? And here we are 10 days in, the second time around, and I'm seeing dramatic results. Uh, the cravings were rough the first few days, but ever since then, I'm feeling great. It was just sort of kind of like the way you started the Atkins diet. you got to get through those cravings. That's right. And so once you get over the cravings and you start um, eating sweet-free, it really becomes natural. Now, I know I'm only 10 days in on this. I still have the temptation to maybe have a diet soda or maybe have a chocolate bar or something like that. But right now, I don't have it. What? Nothing. You smile like a big old smiley girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we have for Live La Vida Low Carb on YouTube, episode 57. Mwah. Thank you. Come back again. I think we'll probably do at least one more update with the Sweet Free Challenge so you can see how we're doing and let us know how you're doing. Send us an email or you can leave us a comment down there and we'll be very grateful. So, see ya! Bye.